December 14th of last year. I think it's safe to say that we all sat there and watched in infamy as we heard about a madman who burst into a school building in Connecticut and opened fire on innocent young lives. Some of you in here are parents, and during the school year, you, you expect every day to go pick up your kid from school. But I want you to imagine for a second only going to the school to identify a body bag. If you'll shift gears with me for a second and, and imagine that, that this guy didn't die, but imagine being the chaplain commissioned to go speak to this man about Christ. It's, it's your destiny, it's, it's your calling to, to get this man to hear the gospel. What would your thoughts be? Would they be like mine? And knowing what he's just done with everything inside of you, would you would you really want to tell him the good news? Or would you just, or with everything inside of you, be saying, no, this, this man does not deserve to go to heaven. You see, that's where we pick up in Jonah chapter 1. Nineveh was full of people like this. The Syrians were people who would just ruthlessly kill people without even a second thought. I think we give Jonah a bad rap a lot of times, talk about how how we want to go fulfill the mission that God placed on his life. But if we were honest with ourselves, we wouldn't do it either. I mean, if you put it in perspective, it would basically be like God calling one of us to go minister to Iran while they're killing people as we speak. So Jonah runs away from God, and we all know the story from there. He gets caught up in the belly of a big fish. That's where we pick up in Jonah chapter 2. You see, at this point, Jonah is at his lowest low. If you imagine all your troubles and trials in this life and being surrounded by them and engulfed, well, that's where you are. Right? That's where he is right now. See, you see, this whole chapter is Jonah's prayer while inside the fish. This is where he has a true heart transformation. You see, the, the irony of this passage is that he realizes that things could be worse. He understands that he should be dead and punished for what he's done and that his heart has been hardened just like the Ninevites, but rather that it's only by the good grace of God that he's still alive. In verse 6, he even, he even says, My head should be wrapped with seaweed, but you, O Lord, save me from the jaws of death. I tell you all this to say this one thing, is that when you realize the grace of God that has been bestowed upon your life, of where you should be and where you are at the moment, that will give you the reason, the cause, the courage, to go out and finish the mission that God has placed on your life. You see, Jonah chapter 1, Jonah gets the call, but runs away from God. Jonah chapter 2, God works on Jonah's heart. Chapter 3, he goes to finish the mission. You see, this concept of finishing the mission is so important, so much so that Paul even wrote about it in the New Testament. Acts 20:24. 20, he says, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it to finish the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. You see, when you understand it's not about you, that you've been just as dirty as your enemy at heart, and that it's about God, you realize the reason that you should go finish the mission that God has placed on your life. So if you'll take a moment and reflect with me. Now, realizing the grace that has been put on your life how might your heart need to change? Is your heart at a place of authentic surrender and willing to do anything that God wants you to do right now? Or has it been hardened? I want to encourage you today to give it up to God. Let him soften your heart and let him finish his mission through you. Thank you.